in round two of the Qatar Masters, something funny happened. Vladimir Fedosev, who was playing white in this position against uh, a young FM from India, 229 rated, was in a completely lost position. Vladimir Fedosev was a, a Russian GM who has uh, just shifted federations to Slovenia. And in this position where black is up a queen for a rook, where the FM is completely winning, Vladimir Fedosev just left the tournament hall and never came back. So Sindhil Marin, FM Sindhil Marin had to wait for 1 hour 34 minutes just to win the game from this position because the opponent just left. This act by Fedosev was not received well by uh, top GMs around the world. Fedosev himself had something to say about his action and that makes things really spicy. Is this another cheating accusation coming up? GM Srinath was one of the first to bring this into light and he was even ready to file a complaint for unsportsmanly conduct against Fedosev. Now, the next day, Fedosev himself uh, posted on X and he says he has valid reasons to, uh, to have acted like this and he's going to annotate this game after the tournament is over. So, we don't want to wait that long. So let us have a look at the game to see what made Fedosi leave the tournament hall and uh, just make his made his opponent wait for one hour thirty four minutes to win a win a position that's like this. So before we go to the game, you have to understand Fedosi had lost his first round game to Kushagra, another player from India, and IM, who's rated two four one two, and this was his second loss in a row. Now, coming to the game, Vladimir Fedosev was white and he started with d4, the queen's pawn, and we have queen's gambit. And Sindhil Marin chooses the Slav defense. Knight f3, knight f6, e3, e6, bishop, queen c2, knight d7, bishop d3, takes, takes, and bishop d6. So, regular opening moves, castles, castles, and queen c2. Preparing e4 and putting pressure on h7. e5, Sindhil Marin chooses the right time for the pawn break. Knight c3. E4 is not really a threat anytime soon. White is stopping that with three pieces. Queen E7, it's still not a threat. Just two versus three. So Bishop D2, Fedosev just develops his uh, last piece. And now Rook E8, there's a threat of E4. So you have to either take here or take with the Knight. Or what Fedosev played, the third option, which was Knight G5. Sort of sideline. Pawn H6, but his plan is to go to E4. Takes, takes, and he wants to exchange off the Bishop and get the Bishop pair for White. But Sindhil Marin plays bishop d4, takes, takes, and Fedosev says, let's go to the endgame. Sindhil Marin says, no, not yet. Queen e7, rook d1, knight f6, because black wants to complete his development. Takes, takes, and here Fedosev decides to go to the endgame. Takes, takes, and knight d6. So it looks like a nice position for white, right? So far, nothing unusual from black. And it, it's a position that seems like the GM, the higher rated GM, uh, would hope to slowly outplays opponent in the endgame and get home the point. Here, bishop moves, allowing knight takes pawn, but after rook b8, black, Sindhil Marin gets the b2 pawn. Rook b8, but Fedosu makes him earn the pawn back. Bishop c8, knight moves, takes, takes, and now rook takes b2. Black's pieces are becoming active. There's a rook sitting on second rank, right? But white's rook is also good. A pawn is hanging, so a3, and now rook a5. Attacking the knight. Now a3 pawn is gone, right? But knight b4 attacking c pawn, c5. Now how, how do you stay equal? How do you not lose the pawn? This was an important moment of the game. Uh, the correct move would have been knight d3. So that if the rook moves, let's say, to b3 attacking the a pawn, then knight e5. Threatening rook d8 and you win the pawn back. When black takes on a3. Or if the rook went back all the way to stop rook d8, check, then this pawn is hanging when black takes on a3. So it would still be equal. So this was the best option for Fedosev. He goes for knight, rook check, king moves, and knight c6. Attacking the other rook, allowing a temporary pawn up for black, but then knight e5. And f pawn is attacked. right? So here it is possible to go rook b7, a little bit passive, but uh, that would also have been fine. It would be a clean pawn up. Sindhil Marin plays rook a2. He goes the active way. Attacking f2, but it's defended two times. But knight e4 is coming. The third piece is jumping in. 
and you can't move the pawn because then everything falls. Mate ha happens if you move the pawn. So knight takes f7, knight g4, there's a threat of knight f2 or rook f2. Here, pawn h4, not allowing knight f2 because h5 is coming with a mate threat. Rook h8 would be mate after h5. So Sindhinvaran gets the hell out of there, king g6. And now knight check, king moves, rook check, king moves, and knight g6. The rook is defending f2. So three pieces are defending it, three pieces are attacking it. So everything is fine. The only difference being black has two pass pawns. And black's king is very active. So here, a5. Sindhinvaran just starts rolling down the pawn. Knight f4 check, king moves, knight g6 check, king moves. So Sindhinvaran is saying, I'm okay with the draw. But because of the rating difference, Vladimir Fedosi wants to win this. He says the pawns are weak and I've still got chances. He goes for rook f4, attacking the knight. Pawn h5, cementing the knight on g4. And now rook went back to f8. Pawn a4, the pawn keeps rolling. Knight check. Again, Sindhinvaran is saying, I'm okay with the draw. But Fedosi goes for rook f5. He wants some counterplay to stay in the game, maybe win the game still. He's attacking both pawns. He's going to get back one pawn, right? But f2 is hanging because the knight is blocking the rook. Rook f2. And the funny thing is, you can't take the rook here. If you take the rook, there is check. The king can't move. Rook has to block. Then takes, takes knight e3 and it's a winning knight in game. Two pawns up. So Fedosi cannot take the rook here. He plays rook e1 defending his pawn. He's still attacking both the pawns. Right? So even though he's a pawn down, he's going to get back the pawn. Takes on h5. It's even. Even material. But then knight e3 comes. Takes and takes. So he found a way to stay a pawn up. Because both knights were hanging. So Sindhilmarin is in a double rook endgame with GM Vladimir Fedosev. And he is a pawn up. That too with an active king and the pawns going forward. But so far all the moves have been pretty much natural. Right? Rook g3 attacking the g-pawn and defending his own g-pawn. King c6. This move might, might seem a little bit weird. But it is not actually because rook g6 was the threat. The king would be forced back and then rook will take with check. So that is why he played king c6 and he can't really defend that pawn. If you go defense, then you will anyway lose the pawn. Right? So he plays king c6, allowing the pawn to be taken back, but his king will be active now. Material is back to even. Two pawns each. But the a pawn is stronger. And the king is stronger. Pawn a3. King h2. This was a slight mistake. This was a chance for white to go behind the pawn. That would have been a better fight for white. But now after king h2 getting out of the back rank, it makes sense. But black now gets the rook behind the pawn, which is a big advantage. Rook check, king moves in. Rook check, king moves in. Fedosi was just lost. He helped the black king into the game and his own pawns are not going anywhere. And the A pawn is a big threat. Fedosi brings the rook back. Sindhinvaran just moves the rook out of the way, getting ready to push the pawn. Rook goes to A1, king B3. Not yet pushing the pawn. I mean, A2 would also have been like good. A2 would, would have been better. But okay, king b3, king h3. He's not afraid of rook b3, rook b6 check because of rook b4. King b2. And now rook goes away, but now pawn a2. It's all over. Rook check, king moves out. He does not even play rook, rook b4 blocking, which would also have been winning. After rook c, you can just push the c pawn as well. But uh, that's still some defense, right? But he doesn't want to give any chance. He goes king c3, rook check, king d2, rook check, king e3. And there's no way to stop the a pawn. So Fedosev takes the rook and uh, Sindhilmarin queens and this is where the incident happens. Rook check, rook blocks, rook moves to h6 and now Sindhilmarin plays queen g7 and in this completely lost position, Vladimir Fedosev just left the tournament hall. We don't know whether he left after Sindhilmarin played queen g7 or before the move. Probably before the move because after this move happens, if you leave on your turn, that's even more dis disrespectful. So here in this completely winning position, Sindhil Marin, who had played this game so well, and it doesn't seem like a suspicious game, right? There were no moves that looked unnatural. It was just a regular game and he played to his potential. And Vladimir Fedosi was the one who overpressed when he had the draw in hand. He had played a wonderful game, did Sindhil Marin, and he had to unfortunately wait for 1 hour 30 to 34 minutes for GM Fedosi's time to run out. His own time was 5 minutes when he played this move. 
so this was a act of entitlement and ego by gm vladimir fedosev 